Okay, let's do a little bit of probability. Consider the word Olympiad, right? Whenever you get questions like this, always count how many um, uh, letters you have. So here we have eight letters, important, because that's probably gonna come into play. It says, how many six letter word arrangements can be made if the letter may be repeated? So basically it's saying, if you put all these letters into a bag and you took out these letters at random, right? And you did that six times, but you put them back every time you took them out, right? So you you have eight letters that you're choosing from every single time. So there's my six letters, okay? So here I have eight options. I have eight options, eight options, eight options, eight options for any of these. Because there's six letters, I have eight to the power of six. That is how many arrangements I can have. So it's important to visualize what you're doing with probability. It's one of those practical sections which you can kind of use a visualization to help you. Then it says, how many six letter word arrangements can be made if the letters may not be repeated? Okay, so then we know we have six. So here I have eight options. Here I have seven, six, five, four, three. Okay, so here I have this many arrangements. Okay, because they can't be repeated, so I take them out and I can't put them back in. Right, so this element of, this is basically at the top one, it's saying replacement, right? And this one here is saying without replacement. So very important to understand what's being said. So over here, put that into your calculator and you'll get that that equals 20160. Okay, so important to visualize what you're doing. Now, this question is asking us to draw a tree diagram. A little bit tricky, but let's read it. A box contains three 40 watt light bulbs, five 60 watt light bulbs, and seven 10 watt light bulbs. So in total, we have 15 light bulbs. Important, we always need to know our sample space. Two bulbs are taken out at random and at the same time from the box. Represent the above information in a tree diagram. Okay, so we have three options initially. Okay, we have our 40, um, watt light bulb or 60 watt light bulb and our 100 watt light bulb. Our chances of getting the 40 are 3 out of 15, chance of getting the 60 is 5 over 15 and chance of getting the 100 is 7 over 15. Okay so that's our first light bulb. Our second light bulb we then have three options again for each of them and then that can be 40, 60, 100, 40, 60, 100, 40, 60, 100. So remember, you're taking them out at the same time, so you're not replacing them. So here, if I've taken out a 40 watt light bulb, I then have 14 left, right? And two of them are 40. Then over here, it's still gonna be the same because I haven't taken out a 60 watt light bulb or a 100 watt light bulb. I took out a 40 for my first one. Then over here, I've taken out a 60, so I only have four of the 60s left, but I still have three of the 40s and I have seven of the 100s. For my 100, I've taken out one of the 100 ones, so I only have six left of those, but I still have five of my 60s and I have three of my 40s. Okay, so please remember when it when it asks you to draw a tree diagram, remember to put your probabilities in, right? I think often what students do is they forget to put the probabilities in and they just sort of draw the scenarios. Be careful to put your probabilities in. Now, they're probably going to ask us to some degree to use this tree diagram, so let's see. It says, calculate the probability that the sum of the watts of the, of the bulbs taken out is 160. Now, how many, how many light bulbs were taken out? It says two. So between the two, it has to equal 160. So we know that you can only take out a 100 and a 60, right? If we take out a 40, there's no other light bulb that if we take it out and we add its wattage to the 40, it's gonna give us 160. So we either need to take out a 60 and a 100, or we need to take out a 100 and a 60. Okay, because it can be in any order. Okay, so let's go to our tree diagram and see what that equals from a probability perspective. Okay, so if we go 60 and then 100, it's going to be 5 over 15 times by 7 over 40. Okay, so 5 over 15 times by 7 over 14. Let's do our second scenario. We have 100, right, and then we have a 
60, so it's 7 over 15. 7 over 15 times by 5 over 14, right? And you need to add these two together. So put that into your calculator, add them together, and that gives you 1 over 3. Always remember to simplify your probabilities. If it says in a percentage, put it as a percentage. It didn't specifically say, so I left it as a fraction. Okay, so just be careful there. There's two different ways you can get this, and the different ways you can get it are important. Okay, let's do our last probability question here. It says, Maria decides to enter two different maths in the beds. Sure, very ambitious. The probability that she wins the one is 0, 0,02, and the probability that she wins the other is 0, 0,08. Okay, so she's got a better chance in the second one. Assuming, the win assuming that winning the different Olympiads are independent, important, when you're thinking independent, you think, oh, I need to go to my formula sheet, and I know that independence, um, oh, I can not get an independence. So you need to know, right, that independence is A and B equals the probability of A times by the probability of B. It basically means that in winning the one, it doesn't impact her probability of winning the other. This is what independence means. So then it says, determine the probability that she will win at least one of them. So either she can win one or she can win both, right? In the one, she can either win the 0 0.021 or she can win the 0 0.081, okay? Or she can win both, right? So there's a couple of scenarios here, but what you could say is you could say, well, the probability of at least one win and this is the way I would think about it. Equals 1 minus the probability of no win. Okay? That's a little bit easier, I think, to do it that way. There are other ways you can do it. Go look at it in the memo. But this, to me, is the most logical way. So what is the probability? And we know that these are independent, so we can just times them, of no win in either of them. In the first one, the probability of no win is that. Okay? And we're going to times it by the probability of no win for the other one. So that's going to be 0 0.92. Okay, right? So that's the probability of no win in the first Olympiad. And that's the probability of no win in the second Olympiad. Right? We know that they're independent because they told us that. So we can do that. And then we just put this into our calculator. Make sure that you type it in correctly. And the probability that she will win at least one of them is 0, 0,0984, which is equivalent to 9.84.84%. They didn't ask for percent, but I just want you to be able to convert between different forms in probability. Okay, this is the most logical way of doing it, simplest way of doing it. Go look at the memo if you want other solutions, but this to me is the most logical.